Today, I'm here to talk to you guys about Omnigen, a brand new AI image generation model that is designed to encompass everything that we've seen with AI generation up and until this point. All of it run through text prompting. What does that mean? Well, if we have a look at the Omnigen GitHub page, it's all explained clearly right here. What they've tried to do is combine in one single model, diffusion-based image generation, control net, in-painting, out-painting, Florence-level image recognition, and the ability to manipulate all of that purely through text. As you saw in the example earlier, I just had to give the model my initial reference image, tell it what I wanted to do, in this case, change the jacket to pink, and all on its own, it was able to not only recognize the jacket to give me the desired result. And that's just one example of what Omnigen can do. If we look over here again at the GitHub, the control that it has an understanding of posing. As you can see here, we have an initial prompt, which is up here, which gives this image. You can use that image and the pose from that image to generate a completely new image. And if you see here, it's taken that image, created the control net, and then created another image based on that, all through text prompting. Here's an example where it's got an image of these three men. They've provided a second image of a person and they've combined purely through text, the gentleman here in the middle and the child in a library. This opens up a whole new realm of possibilities of what we can do with AI image generation and large language models. Furthermore, if we look over here at this Reddit on the Stable Diffusion subreddit, where they talk a little bit more in detail about what this model can do coming from their papers. We've discussed standard text to image where you take your prompt, it turns into an image. The model has the capability to do reasoning. In this example here, they gave an image and they were able to ask it, where do I wash my hands? And it gave a result of the masked out area. They even show here in this side prompt here, the prompt asking the model to remove anything that can hold water. There's a large language model built into this. You type it in, it has an understanding and it's able to transfer that understanding to the AI image generator, to the image recognition component, and it all works seamlessly together. Here's another example, giving two images, one with two regular chess pieces, with one of them masked out, and it's able to replace the chess piece from the second image into the location of the first image. What's crazy about this is it looks like with this technology, you can link up any large language model to a stable diffusion bay and effectively get the same results with bigger models. So it'll be very interesting to see where this technology goes and whether we'll see the likes of OpenAI incorporated into ChatGPT, which could completely be a massive game changer, challenging even behemoths like Photoshop's for simple editing tasks that you can now do with a large language model. So let's look at a few more examples and then I'm gonna show you guys how to install this in a variety of different platforms. So this is the Omnigen standalone app. I'm also gonna show you guys how you can get it set up and running in Comfy UI. So if we look at the example that they've provided down here, so in the app, they've got here some descriptors on how to use the model. The most important thing here is that if you drag in an image, you'll see here that there are some tags, IMG image one, two, and three. This is how you reference the images that you've uploaded in the prompting part of the large language model, which is up here. So you can see here, I've got the image tags and I'm referencing image one, which is the woman over here. So let's have a look at some of these examples. Now this example down here, we're gonna click this one, where we've got two reference women, and it says here two women are raising fried chicken legs in a bar. One woman is image one, and the other woman is image two. Basically, we wanna take the two women in these images and have them raising fried chicken in a bar. Let's go ahead and run that and see what we get. And there you have it. It really is incredible how well the model has done this, the level of fidelity that we've got here, and the overall prompt understanding. You look at the two images here, both women are there. Understandably, the woman on the left is not a perfect representation as she is a little bit smaller in the reference image, but the one here on the right, absolutely perfect. Image quality is phenomenal. Their faces are absolutely phenomenal quality. And as usual, I pay attention a lot to hands on this channel. The hands are great, almost no distortion. Better almost than Flux or even Stable Diffusion. And once you've got it installed, you can go through the other demos down here. Now, I do wanna get into a couple of important pointers about the settings. You've obviously got the standard items, height and width over here. I have it set at a standard of 1024 to 1024. I'm not sure what the edge case limits are for this. The model does have here as a standard 2048 by 2048. So I wonder if it has similar capabilities to Stable Diffusion 3.5 medium. The guidance scale here is really important. If you are noticing that there are a lot of issues with the image, particularly oversaturation, you wanna lower your guidance scale. 
The image guidance scale here is how aggressively you want to reference the images. Again, use this if you want to try and bring more or less cohesion to the starting images. Inference steps, that's fairly straightforward. Seed is very straightforward. Max input image size, I believe this will try and adjust the size of the image or images that you have provided. This is very important if you find that the model is taking too long to generate the images, let's say that you're doing some testing. Drop the max input size and that should run a little bit faster. And finally, use input image size as output. This one is really important if you're just using one image and you're using the model to edit things. That will speed things up and improve the quality of the image output. You do, however, need to untick that if you are using more than one reference image. And that's pretty much it. So how do we install this? Well, I've made it really simple for you guys. I'm currently running this on RunPod, and if you are a RunPod user, you can go ahead and just use the template down below that I've already set up. You can just head on over to Pods, Deploy, grab your GPU of choice, and use the template I have provided down below. Click the link and all of this will be set up for you and deploy it. Now it does take a little bit of time to deploy. Once you've deployed it, head on over to pods here to your pod, open it up and just click play so that the logs are ongoing. And you'll just need to wait until you see the starting Omnigen log entry. Wait a little bit and you'll see some additional downloads happening. And then finally you will see here running on local URL. That's when you know it's live. Once you've done that, click on connect and click here on 7860. Now you might see it red, that's fine. You're able to run it before it picks it up and that will take you to the G radio over here. Incredibly simple. But what if you wanna run it on your own local machine? Well, there's two ways you can go about doing that. One is by using Pinocchio and I have a Pinocchio install video coming out very soon. There's a couple of little extra things that you need to do if you're running it on a Mac. And if I have that video out, the link should be up here. If you already have Pinocchio installed, this is gonna be really easy. Go ahead and open it up, go to discover and type in Omnigen. There you go, you've got it here. Go ahead and open that, download it. If you need to install any additional elements, in this case, I need to do Pi and Cloudflare, go ahead and click install. You'll then see another screen asking you to confirm the Git. Go ahead and confirm that. That should be pretty much it. You should have it installed. You can go ahead and run it. I'll show you guys here on Comfy UI what that looks like. You'll see a screen similar to this one and some options here that will allow you to launch it. Go ahead and click that and you should be good to go. If you guys have any problems, please do come by the Discord. I'm really sorry, I'm just not able to show you on this particular machine. If you do have problems with Pinocchio, you just don't wanna use it because you've had issues with it before. I personally had issues trying to run Comfy UI with Pinocchio. I do have some installer scripts available on my Patreon. You can go and find them there. That will go ahead and just download and install Omnigen for you on your local machine. The manual way would be to get over to the Omnigen GitHub, go to code, copy this, and then git clone it into a local directory. And then you can go ahead and run it from there. You'll need to run app.py and you should be good to go. So once you've got your folder, go ahead and open up terminal in it, type in git clone and drop in that git. And once that's done, all you need to do is type in app.py and you should be good to go. Once again, any problems, drop by the Discord or check out the installers that I have on my Patreon. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps us out. And if you really want to support the channel and get access to all kinds of exclusive goodies, workflows, and installers, just like the one I mentioned earlier, please do support me on Patreon. Your support is what helps me make these videos possible. It's starting to get a little expensive to try and put these out week after week. And anybody who supports me there, well, you're making these videos happen. So thanks. I love you guys and I'll catch you guys in the next one.